So how are you today? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and we've got Danny here as well. How are you going, Danny? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for inviting awesome. me on the show again. No problems. Well, you're my regular. You're my offsider. So <laughs> we kick ass together. <laughs> yeah, we got to do, don't we? Hey, thanks for coming yeah, on, Bill. Yes. Oh, I'm man, so I've been doing it. Join us. And uh, look, unfortunately, we don't have suspicious observers with us today. Uh, hopefully that uh, we might be able to get him another time, but uh, unfortunately we had a bit of a mix-up with time zones, and uh, he had to work, so we don't have him with us. But I'm sure you can pick your brain, Mr. Tutor, and uh, we are going to be doing that a lot with this show. So um, I suppose let's start off with uh, basically uh, just a little bit of background, uh, Billy. What is your area of research? What do you, uh, you know, really kind of focus on when you are, uh, you know, researching? Well, I mean, two pretty much two main areas. I love astronomy to begin with, and then of course, you know, I've been all into alternative energies, pretty much. Absolutely. So um, you look into Walter Russell's work at all? Yeah, I, I hadn't read whole, all his, everything that he has, but yeah, I've looked into it pretty bit. Oh, I like his work. I find, uh -huh. um, you know, his his theories are pretty much recon, you know, are, are confirming a lot of what's going on. I'm, I'm finding that that's what's happening. All of these researchers that were called crazy back in the day are now actually <laughs> the ones that we should be listening to. So. <laughs> Yeah, Billy, yeah, you know, haven't you been working on some kind of inventions and stuff, Billy? Well, I've been, you know, not necessarily anything of my own. Just try, like she said, they're trying out these, these, you know, old technologies that have been hidden, finding out whether they really work or not. You know, a lot of them don't work, you know, but there are quite a few that do. So. Now, I was interested, um, Billy, because you have a theory about the sun, um, and it's quite different to the flat earth science theories uh, that we currently get from the agency. So can you explain how you see the sun as, uh, you know, working and what the mechanisms are with our sun? Well, that's kind of a long story. <laughs> I don't know it. I mean, I, well, I had you know, to go outside time. one day and, and look. We got a lot of time. To I had to go out and take a look at the sun. Yeah, <laughs> I had to take a second look at the sun one day. I just I, the, the hydrogen fuel cell, you know, was the one that got it started because I started building the thing and and I don't know. I've been they'll call you crazy for saying it. You know what I mean? But I I ask questions, Say it. you know, and I get answers, you know. I can't help that. You know, if you if you can meditate and get in touch with your you know, your your higher self conscious, which I is what I believe it is, you know, you, you, you can get answers Absolutely. to questions. You can get answers to questions. It is that simple really. And yeah. I don't know. It wasn't when I noticed that you know, when I started putting the hydrogen fuel cell, I, I kinda noticed everybody was had dollar signs in their eyes, you know. Yeah. Every single like too. That's all they wanted to talk about was man, you know how much money you can make. Yeah. And I thought to myself, man, I know good and well that this, you know, this is not what this is intended for. So I just continued to ask, what is this about? You know, what am I supposed to be learning? And I just continued to look into it. And it's just something else. It's just something else. The interaction that electricity has with water. I mean, that's yeah, how they grow algae. And, and, you, and I, you and I talked about well, this. You know, uh, it's kind of interesting the way that the universe mm -hmm. kind of communicates to you uh, when you're ready for it, and if you're wanting it, the universe just kind of gives it the information to you, doesn't it, Billy? Just be open to it, you know. Yep. Not, not necessarily expect any answer, you know. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like a subconscious thing. If you expect it, it ain't going to know what. Yeah. I don't know. It, it occurred to me that I mean, it's a sun, and when you really look into it, man, when if, when you realize the sun is not a nuclear furnace, yeah. then it can't it can't really be anything else. There's no other way to reproduce what's in the sky other than an induced current into mostly water. Well, and the fact is, it, 
if an if a high enough current were to be induced into Earth, it would do the same thing. Our atmosphere would burn exactly like that. Yeah. Uh, any of them would. In fact, anything that has water on it's going to burn like that with enough electricity in it. And then when you start seeing all the little cosmic rays and and looking into the you know those are high energy plasmas that show up and that's exactly I mean it's all right there so yeah. it, it can't be but one or two things when you rule out the one it can't be nothing but the other. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose people have a really hard time of wrapping their brain around that there is water on the sun because of course we've been conditioned to believe you know, the flat earth science of the sun being this, uh, you know, nuclear powered furnace, you know, that is very hot and, you know, a ball of fire basically. And, uh, you know, they need so many theories to keep that going, don't they? They kind of need to create all of these new theories every time something different happens on the sun that they can't explain. They bring out these equations again that have to try and make some sense of it. Whereas, you know, when you look at your theory, and the theory of the electric universe and you know it's just so beautifully simple and uh you know even einstein himself said that nothing should be too difficult in um in nature it's always you know you know beautifully simplistic so oh, I, I firmly believe that myself it can't be so complicated that one or two people will only you know figure it out yeah what and is, that's what's that's your right. view on uh what's your view on electricity and magnetism just curious. Right. Do you know, right. Okay. Like, uh, well, like, for example, Santos <laughs> talks about the, uh, uh, he talks about that there's bra, which is the uh, electricity, the radiation, and then there's the magnetism oh. side. Of it. Um, I'm just kind of curious, in, in the research that you've done so far, um, Billy, uh, do you, um, you kind of see magnetism as like a kind of, Another side or another pole of electricity? How do you see it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, some people say they're one and the same, but I don't know that they, they, they kind of they are two different things. But you just don't find them without each other, in my opinion. Uh -huh. I mean, every, everywhere you look, if you find electricity, there's a magnetic field around it. Yeah, almost almost one is a signature of the other. Yet they they do tend to have two different, two different properties, you know. That they can't exist without each other. Uh, Is that right? They yes. can't exist without each other. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. from what I always see, Santos talking about it, it seems to make sense. You know, everything, even in hermetics. You know, when we talk about hermetics, like we have like it's the same thing. It's just on uh, one side of the pole or the other. So does that mean that? Uh, electricity is on one of the pole sides of the pole, and the magnetism is on the other. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think that they know have all the answers to uh, electromagnetic fields and stuff like that, do they? Really? Well, I like, well, they probably would if they'd look. You know, I, I, I think the thunderbolt. The thunderbolt. I mean, they pretty much got it nailed. I, yeah. I mean, it's an induced current that comes from somewhere. You know, our our sun gets it from the center of the galaxy, and if you look into it even further, I just recently. Uh, noticed uh, what what well NASA even recognizes called the Great Attractor. It's located in the Virgo constellation, but actually there are thousands of galaxies, including ours, that are are being drawn into a point in space called the Great Attractor. Oh, I didn't know it's, that. You know, they can't explain you know matter of a black hole in the center of a galaxy. Then they're certainly not going to be able to explain. You know, they're not going to find a particle small enough to, to draw in thousands of galaxies. Yeah. Just not going to get it. It's, it's not a particle there. It's an energy. Exactly. You know, that magnetism and electricity in great yeah. quantity. I mean, they don't even know how magnetism works. They really don't understand it. You know, they have not. And they don't understand gravity either. So... You know, that's because, as you said, they're not looking in the right area. They're continuing to hold on to this, you know, Big Bang theory. But that's because I think that there's an agenda of having to fit all the information within the uh, boundaries of religion. 
I no, think there's, you know, I be... think, D, I, I, I think that this whole thing with CERN and everything that they're doing with the God particle, all that, they already know what's yeah. going on. They already know what's up. Yeah. Those people are not stupid. And they yeah. know uh, what, you know, the deal is, folks, is what we've got is we've got a bunch of scientists out there that have already published stuff. And, you know, the Vatican controls a lot of this stuff. I don't know if you guys have been on to NASA's site, um, but the Vatican is just all up in their butt, okay? Yeah. And, uh, and so if anything uh, comes out that that begins to take people down a path where they may see some kind of a different type of creation of the universe that maybe uh, goes against theology or what people have been taught in the Bible, uh, I think that, that it's being held back. And I think that um, yeah. I, think I think that that kind of thing in science is being held back. And I think that uh, and and these guys that are the publishers, the guys that are the scientists at the top, they're afraid to say what's really going on. Thank God we got um, people like Thunderbolts. Dot Info exactly. out there to actually to you know present other points of views and back them up in a credible way so that people can actually see that that these other guys that are spitting all this other stuff out there are being paid off. And uh, yeah. you know, I see a lot of that kind of stuff going on right now. And so when I see stuff like CERN and when I see them looking for all this, I have to think that there must be some kind of uh, an agenda or something going on because yeah. I know they're smarter than they're letting on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting that you say how, interest, uh, how interested the Vatican are in all of this because I remember last year when they put the uh, wave particle collector, I think you probably know about this, Billy, and they put that up um, on the ISS to uh, measure the particle waves that were coming through, I think, but they actually had a link up with the Pope and the Pope was speaking to the astronauts. Now, why yeah. is the Pope so interested in a wave particle counter? You know, why is he speaking to astronauts? I mean, people need to start asking themselves these questions. Mm-hmm. What was it that they were putting up there, Billy? You know? I have no idea. Uh, it's something to do with particles. They were counting the particles because I think there's a lot of uh, energy that's impacting our planet that they don't understand and they're trying to, you know, measure it and uh, study it and figure it out. So... I think it had something to do with wave particle collector, but yeah, I just thought, why is the Pope on a teleconference call with some astronauts up at the ISS? That really raised my eyebrows, that one. So, yeah, that's, absolutely. I heard that one. That's something else. Well, Billy, yeah, can I, tell, I, I can. Can you tell us a little bit about? Um, I know you kind of explained it to me before. Uh, the stuff that you do and uh, and the these things that you're building. And so, and, these, and things that these guys just don't look at, um, and the uh, uh, the stuff that you're working on. Can you kind of explain that? Because a lot of these folks that are listening right now can probably digest a lot of the technical information and stuff. And I, I think I'd like to hear it as well. Well, uh, that's several things. So, you know, I built a, a, a solar generator, 10,000 watt solar generator, too, here over the past three or four years. You know, working on it a little bit here and there. Yep. That, that to me the best the, right now solar and wind energy and of course the, the new black light uh, concept there I mean it, it's been proven by several uh, universities that it actually works and that's that's a whole new source of power generation that's that's pretty much going to change it all I haven't seen one of those work yet so in my opinion solar and, and wind are the primary sources yeah. to get electricity from, other than you know what what they may come up with with this new energy, black light. It's what's a your, fuel cell technology. It, it's a plate, huh? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Please continue. It, it, it's a it's similar to it's a plate technology, a, a cell technology, just like, like the fuel cell I built here. I mean, it just works in almost in a reverse manner. You add, you induce hydrogen and oxygen into a cell of plates and they, they extract electricity from mm. the from the gas. Or I mean it, you know, like any physics equation, it's supposed to work both ways. You can add electricity to water 
and get energy, or you can do it. Uh, you know, should you know, theory is supposed to be able to do it the other way around too. And and they've proven that that, that actually does work. So it's just a scalability thing. That, you know, having to build one big enough to power somebody's house mm. may end up it may end up being as about as big as a you know a, a, a good size utility shed or something. Yeah. You know. You, you know. Have you built you know, any, any working models uh, of anything that you've done so far, Billy? Uh, well, I had the hydrogen fuel cell works out there, and I've been working on a couple of these magnet motors that they claim work, and I, I hadn't got one working yet. You know, it's a mess. I mean, when you do these kinds of things, you end up doing nine that don't work till you get to mm-hmm. one that does. And, you know, you can't sit and make videos all day about stuff that don't work, so it's been kind of slow about it. <laughs> oh, I, know how to, I know how that goes, yeah. <laughs> huh. So... But, uh, uh, What's your what's your excitement right now? What are you working on currently? Yeah, magnet motor. I'm, I'm real interested in trying to make a magnet motor. It's that force that turns. You know, that's what we got to find yeah. that yeah. turns on its own. You know, that the AC generator that Nick Tesla invented way back. You know, that we do we use the power. Is that, that was? I mean, that's that's the energy deal. You know, it's just a magnet spinning inside of a copper coil or a copper coil spinning inside of a magnet. And, and motion is energy, and if you turn it, the more energy is going to go into it. Yeah. Iron being, it, it's just, iron has that, that property of, of drawing the energy in from our magnetic field. And if you, you know, if you take iron and melt it to a certain point and pass it through electromagnet, at a certain temperature, it becomes a magnet. That's how they make magnets, by the way. They actually add a nickel to it, call it neodymium magnets, which helps align the molecule even better. So actually all a magnet is is a properly aligned chunk of iron, so to speak. And the more the molecules align north and south of each other, the more magnetic that the, you know, the object becomes. This only works with iron, though. You know, that's iron's the only thing you make inside of. Oh, wow. But you can, you, you can make nickel and other things, you know, and make alloys, which actually make stronger magnets. But iron is the basic property of, of the magnet. And, of course, copper is the other side of the equation. You know, it's only those two metals that interact, that create the electricity. And it, it doesn't actually create electricity. When you move a magnet by a piece of copper, that motion draws energy in from a our magnetic field, our you know, our atmosphere is full of energy. It's full of hydrogen, which is where the energy is at. You know, it just happens to be in that hydrogen atom. And you know, if you look at the MRI, they show you, you know, that that the MRI of the hospital it actually does a magnet. They they have two separate magnets on the MRI. So we were basically talking about electromagnetic electricity, and what I was actually doing was looking for a man that had created a, an electromagnetic machine. Now, you might know about this guy, Billy. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. He was originally from the UK, and then what he did was moved over to New Zealand. And he actually created this machine, and he started powering his own home, and then he started actually powering his neighbors' homes as well. And what happened was the police came along and the government came along and said, no, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to do that. And they basically made him, uh, you know, get, get, like, you know, get rid of it and uh, take apart the machine. And he was not allowed to generate his own power. So I'm just wondering really? what's on know that. that. Yeah. I hadn't heard of that either, but I, I could I could speculate that that's a magnet. That's that magnet motor. I mean, they got them out, or supposedly not on the market, but you can find them on YouTube. There's some boys that's done some pretty extensive work on those. You know, it's, it's one up. It's just like two. You got one generator and one electric motor that they take all the wires out of, and they replace it with you know sets of magnets around the armature or the shaft, and then around the housing. And it, if you set them in the right, you know, orientation, yeah. that it'll spin by itself. Oh, I wish I knew this guy's. I wish I knew this guy's name, but I've just posted the video in the chat room. So maybe Stone can have a quick look at the video, please, Stony, and see if you can check out who this guy was, because um, I just found it really interesting how he was not allowed to generate his own power, and I would wonder why that would be against any law. 
you know, so I just um, wonder whether if you did create such a machine, Billy, whether they would just come along and tell you that you can't utilise it. You know, you've got to be connected to the grid and, um, you know, paying to exist using their energy. So... You know what's yeah. funny is when I was when I was 13 years old, uh, yeah. Billy. It's kind of funny, you know, because I remember when I was 13 years old, I told my dad, I said, um, "Can you take me down to the uh, to the hobby store because I think I can make myself a perpetual motion machine." And uh, and he kind of giggled, and uh, and he took me up to the uh, hobby store, and I got myself this. Uh, now I was 13, mind you, so I mean. It's pre- I think it was pretty good for a 13-year-old. So I grabbed, the, I got this stick, and then on this stick I put, um, I, I made it look like a windmill. Okay, there's a windmill. So I made like a windmill, and on each end of the windmill I had a magnet. And okay. then, uh, and then what I had was on the outside I had a stationary magnet sitting there, so that when the magnets would pass by stationary magnet, I was hoping it would continue to move, right? <laughs> and I was wow. thinking, you know, I was thinking, you know, that's not bad for a 13-year-old. That's pretty mm-hmm. good. You know, that that, that kind of makes me um, think about what Billy said at the beginning of the show, and that is that uh, the information is there for us to access. It's just a matter of accessing it. So, you know, that might have been the case of you actually just you know, accessing that that information as a child and just thinking about it in that way. It, you know, yeah. and I, you know, yeah, I think that's crazy. the way Billy gets it. Billy gets it a hell of a lot more complex. Billy gets it the way it's supposed to be yeah. done. It's crazy, too, to think about. But, I mean, it's like, it's almost like there's, I mean, when you really look at it, the universe, everything we'll ever know Everything we'll ever know is in this universe. Yeah. Yep. You know, and and when you see the the scale of micro and macro, and the fact that the you know the human brain cell on the scale, you never see that repeat of the universe again until you get to the brain cell, the biological brain cell. Yep. And to think that all the knowledge is is in the biggest one, you'd have to exactly. say that all that knowledge was in that smaller one too. Absolutely. And, you know, and you think about we don't use but 10% of our brain. Well, you think, well, where's the other 90% at? You know, that's the rest of that knowledge. That's it's awesome. in you now. It, it's like, like they, you know, they refer to it in, in, in universities and colleges to this day. When Einstein realized this was happening or, or when Newton realized this was it, it's because it was it, it was always that way. It was just the fact that he realized it. Yeah. See? It, yeah, it's incredible. He, he, already, he already knew. He just didn't, it, you know, his conscious didn't get a hold of his subconscious to find out, you know. Yeah, yes. I, I actually think that perhaps some of these researchers that don't access that higher self that remain in the physical uh, 3D style of logical thinking perhaps close down those channels to that information. And, you know, then they have that, you know, reliance on these huge theories, these huge equations, because they're not actually opening themselves up and being, you know, um, a conduit to that information. Like, you understand that side of things, Billy, and I suppose that allows you to open up the channels of communication with whatever it is, because, you know, if you look at Walter Russell's work he actually says that all the information that we ever require that we ever need that we ever have had is in existence right now what what we need to do is access that information and um i actually danny had a very uh interesting interaction with someone yesterday in regards to misunderstanding what me what that means about we already have the information danny what happened do you want to kind of talk about what happens and and how people are you know kind of well confusing. you know um, there's a lot you know when i when i get out here on youtube and i and i see what people are typing you know uh, everybody uh wants to feel like they are part of this you know this consciousness expansion 
the problem is yeah. is that um, is that in wanting that so much that people sometimes forget to actually go out and use their own minds in order to expand their consciousness. So what they end up doing is they end up just repeating the words of somebody else. For example, yesterday somebody said, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not what you know, it's why you know it and, and you know everything. See, these kinds of things, like when people say things like you know everything and there's no such thing as time and everything you see is an illusion, you know, all that's great at a level that doesn't exist on the plane that we're existing on. But when we start talking about uh, the plane that we have been given to exist on, uh, we have to understand that we've been given certain rules, to uh, universal rules to live by. That's That's the whole nature of where we are. So so you can say that time doesn't exist if you want to. You can say that knowledge isn't isn't necessary because we know everything. And you can say all these things. But uh, you're fooling yourself um, because in in this reality that we are in right now, you a have to go. You have to uh, uh, follow the universal law of time. You uh, b you have to um, you have to have knowledge. I mean, you can say that you just know everything, but and knowing is just wonderful and it's it's a great buzzword and a great thing to say. Um, but the only way that you know something is because you've learned something. And so yeah. people need to make sure that they continue to try to learn more and more. People, and, and they've really got to be careful about these buzzwords that people just repeat like that. Like, uh, like you know everything, so when the universe is ready to tell you what you need to know, you'll know it. So just go sit in the dark room and wait, and when the time is yeah. right, it'll happen. No, that's not how it works. Uh, you've got to go out and search for it. You've got to want yep. to know more. You've got to want to learn more. And you've got to approach everything with the curiosity of a child. You know, one of the exactly. problems that everybody gets into out there is that, um, uh, and, and this is one of the big problems I have with this Saturn people, you know, that I, that I keep that we keep confronting with, is because you go to these people's channels and you take a look at what they're showing, it's all fear-based, okay? It's, it's all about Saturn, cubes, locusts, everything else. And if you take a look at that kind of stuff, and, and then they call themselves Christians. And I'm kind of digressing here. The problem is, is that it's all this fear. And the whole reason that this fear has been put into place is because when you scare somebody, they, they don't want to know about the information, right? That's so right. If, I tell you, if I tell you, for example, that Saturn is, um, is bad and you're a researcher, okay, well, um, what a lot of people do on YouTube and on the Internet is they just go, well, you know, Danny said that Saturn's bad, so Saturn is bad, right? And they don't go out and they don't go and check the information themselves. When somebody tells me something, I don't care if it is God Almighty, okay? I go out and I bounce the information off against other information, and I see what confirms itself and what um, it contradicts itself. You have to be very careful, folks, because there's a lot of people out there that just want you to to uh, follow them because they know damn well you're not going to go out and research the information yourself. So they want to pull you yeah. into a little cult, cult of whatever they believe. If you're uh, if you're a smart person, what you do is you listen to what they had to say and they go, oh, hmm, okay, and then you go and you go to another place and you see what they have to say and see it, and you compare the information together and see if they uh, contradict yeah. each other or if they confirm. That is what a real analyst does. That is how you get to the truth. And that's how you yeah. get to the truth when it comes to news. It doesn't matter what news you listen to, whether it's Fox News, ABC. I mean, look, Fox News has been right sometimes, right? But you know how I know that? Because when you put 100 people in the same room and you want to find out who the liar is, you ask everyone. You don't ask just the liar. You ask everyone in the room what the story is. And when everybody tells you one thing and one person tells you something different, you know who the liar is. That's why it's so important to research the information yourself, folks out there. Don't be, don't fall into this whole fear trap. People want to scare people, yeah. saying this, this is evil, that is evil, Saturn's evil, cubes are evil, locusts are, you know. I'm so Nothing sick of all this stuff. Nothing is evil. Yeah, everything, is, that everything is evil, right? And I'm so sick of hearing it because it yeah. scares people away from knowledge. Yeah. Well, you know, I had an interaction. I had an 
interaction myself with uh, someone yesterday and, uh, you know, he's quite a nice person. I can tell he's got a very good heart and perhaps he's just quite a little bit confused at the moment and he actually follows some of these um, very hateful channels that bring out this information. And uh, when I questioned him as how could you actually take any information from this channel when it, it's so hateful and spiteful and they attack the, you know, they attack people like, you know, you, Danny, and me, and uh, Nibiru Magic and Santos Bonacci. We're all being attacked. They're making these videos and attacking us. So I said, you know, I just don't understand how you could follow someone that is so hateful. What could you possibly gain? And he said, oh, well, he says that the uh, Saturn cult has all of the uh, political leaders in it, you know, so I really need to listen to that because you've got that information. Well, you know, why not go and actually do the research into the Saturn cult? Is there any evidence to show that uh, we've got these high-ranking politicians that are in this Saturn cult? Because, you know, I've done a lot of research myself, and I can tell you that the politicians really don't matter at all, guys. They are just puppets, you know. They don't really have a lot of power at all. They're just talking mouthpieces that get paid off at the end of the day and go on to live, you know, a life of uh, indulgence after they have uh, served their their term as a puppet, you know. So this is what Danny's saying, and uh, also what I'm saying is that... Oh, oh, I've got a phone call. Hang on two seconds. Yeah, I agree. They're there just to distract uh, yeah, guys I mean, off yeah, the he, prize. He, he, he's, you well, know, he's, he's just taken that, you know, Saturn cult as its, so its absolute evidence. And, and as you said, Danny, if he went and spent the time actually doing a little bit of research, he would find that it's speculation. There's really not a lot of, in, you know, kind of evidence that, that suggests that that is the case, you know, so. Well, so the, the, the guys in the chat room are wanting to know why I was looking at the nebula in the first place. This takes me back to... Well, you know, when I first jumped on YouTube, um, you know how we're all just kind of looking at everything out there, right? We're just kind of absorbing information. I just happened to be uh, in a position where I was looking at, because uh, I had just seen some stuff about the Vatican, uh, and I was looking at the, the churches and this art and stuff like that, and I had just seen some stuff about the, you know, the cosmos and stuff like that. And about a year and a half, two years ago, um, I was a completely different person. I was stuck in my whole little uh, world of uh, systems analysis, uh, you know, trying to bring home the buck, you know, every day. And it's a great little life and everything like that. But um, even though that uh, I don't have a job right now, I wouldn't trade with the knowledge that I have uh, for the world. I mean, yeah. but it just so happens that I happen to be looking at the Orion Nebula, a pitch, the, the, the highest resolution that NASA had to offer, uh, and the uh, and the Spitzer version of it, and I was looking at church art at the same time, and uh, and I just happened for whatever reason, it's I just happened to put the two together. I saw them on the screen at the same time or something, and uh, and I was like, you know, that looks a lot like that. And I remember when I uh, I remember when I think back, I think back, and I was like. Well, I wonder if that could, and I had no idea, you know, the depth of the, the knowledge that I have now about uh, about what all this meant. All I was really looking at were shapes, right? And I was like, you know, that, yeah. looks, that looks almost exactly like what I'm seeing here on this altar. And uh, and so I remember when I first put out the first video, I was like, folks, this is what I'm seeing. They're showing a right up. Oh, my gosh, you know, I got so many thumbs down on that because, and I really wasn't very doing a very uh, good job at uh, at showing people uh, what I was seeing, and so it's actually been a very interesting progression uh, yeah. at finding ways to show people uh, what's out there, you know, because you know the communication, you know, finding ways to hit people and say to make them that light bulb turn on, very challenging thing to do. You have to try all different types of things, right? And so although I could see it, although I could see something, I didn't know how to communicate, see? And so finally, I think with these overlays lately, I think I've done a pretty good job. Yeah, that's definitely hitting the spot. You know, it's interesting, Danny, because, you know, we were looking at a lot of Michelangelo's, uh, Michelangelo, sorry, and um, and it seems to be that there are waves of illumination. You're kind of breaking up a little bit again, again Danny, I think. Oh, Do sorry, you're... guys. Um there are kind of uh, waves of illumination or a way, waves of enlightenment that seem to happen throughout history. 
And the Renaissance seems to be one of these times where we had this enlightening and this illumination. And I find it interesting that that Orion was talking to these artists and it seems now Orion is also talking to you. So I wonder if Orion opened up these channels at certain times, you know, certain uh, certain cycles in the cosmos, cosmos cause us to access this information for Orion a lot easier and this is actually what you're doing. You're actually accessing the same information that these artists were accessing. However, you're actually using their information to bring it out to others if you you know can kind of understand where I'm going with that. Yep. I'd say, I'd say it, it, maybe not as much access as it is being broadcast to you. Yeah. More than I don't know. I don't know. You, you look at history too. When these, when all the massive amounts of knowledge come out, and even in recent history, this has happened. There's yeah. always some consequence to it, either you know before or after, you know globally, cataclysmically, yeah. as speaking. Like uh, I was looking at something just the other day. I saw an article about giants were discovered in Kansas, and uh, there was an actual article in a scientific journal. Uh, uh, you know, where they found a whole family of giant wow. people, uh, you know, in Kansas. Well, what was crazy about it was, in the article, there were three other articles around that one. And uh, S.O. and I were actually looking at it together, and I was showing him the giant article. And he's like, Billy, do you see what's wrote over here? And I'm like, no, I didn't pay no attention. Started looking, and, well, there's one on there about spiral energy, and then there's another article down there about how electricity may play a part in weather. Well, you look at the date. It was from 1882. Wow. The Scientific Journal was from 1882. This grand amount of knowledge was in this one page. Yet in 1883 was the year of the Great Comet, the year of Krakatoa, wow. the consequence, you know. Wow. But this seems to be well, the same thing. You know what 1882 was also with the year of Venus transit? Uh-huh, yeah. So and, I find that very interesting, too. <laughs> There's obviously... a a lot of correlation between uh, these cosmic events and uh, these illuminations because it's even almost like you know you here you need you're going to need this here it's like here's some knowledge you may need this yeah exactly yeah exactly that's kind of the way it works and you know what's funny yeah. too it always has a certain timing about it doesn't it yeah it's uh -huh. almost, it always it's right almost right there. like part of a script it's it's almost like uh, you know you it's like right. When you need the information, here it is. <laughs> That's what's yeah, funny. exactly. Synchronicity yeah. and and all of that plays a big part in it all. It's, and like you say, it's, it's almost like a script that we're following. That uh, all of this information actually, you know, comes up when it should. You know, interestingly, a lot of this wasn't even really being discussed five years ago. Why is that? Why is it that we are now only discussing this information in a way that people can actually? Um, understand it as well you know i think you have to be ready for the information um, it's a little bit like when they talk about hermetics and throwing pearls before the swine you know so if you're not actually ready for the information then there's not a lot you can do with it because you're just quite simply not going to understand it so i find it really interesting how we are consciously expanding and there's these cycles and obviously the venus transits and uh, it all seems to tie in to us moving forward but you know it's interesting guys that uh, we know that we're moving into an eon and i and i know there's some discussion about oh no it's not for another hundred years and oh it's not this well you know i tend to go with uh you know john mike uh john major jenkins who's done a lot of research in this area we are definitely moving towards the galactic alignment and uh you know a new eon and you know a golden age is you know basically what i feel we are heading towards just because I can see this conscious expansion and um, interestingly, civilization is always at its peak at the beginning of these ages mm. and then they decline. So, I'll tell you what, when you start looking into it like that too, you, you start realizing how far back it went where this knowledge was being given to you. And man, it's incredible. I mean, I, I was born and raised in a sheet metal shop. I, that's all I've ever done my whole life. In fact, I used to take the books home from work, you know, and study to then self-taught myself how to make pretty much everything, you know, fabrication-wise, 
any type of, you know, sheet metal fit. I can make a car hood or a, a car door. It don't matter. You know, air conditioning, it doesn't matter. Once you learn how to use the compass and square, you, you can make anything you want. In fact, that's the two tools that you got to have. And and I started learning that back in my teens and not realizing what it, that was going to have any implication now to all this. It's incredible. And that's you know, just it's incredible confirmed. when you start that's looking back how thing. far back it goes. And that just confirms the yeah. whole idea that it it it's you know folks are always worried about the ABCs, the XYZs. How do I do this in order to reach a higher state of consciousness or or get that information that I need? And it's not Stop that crying. difficult. It's not that difficult. So all it, all you got to do is do exactly what Billy did, and that is want to know more. You gotta, yeah. be, you gotta be curious. You gotta, you gotta want to know more, and you gotta just not let things scare you. Always take an open approach. You gotta have an open approach. You know, you gotta have an open approach. Have you no know, indoctrinated thoughts in your head, or as no. right. I don't know. It all starts know. with curiosity. All, and I, it all starts with curiosity, yeah, and if I you're not it. curious and you don't want to know more, well, you're not going to get the information. It's not about systems of, you know, and this is where I see a lot of people that uh, they just don't understand, you know. There's like, well, gosh, I meditate every day for 10 minutes and I listen to 432 hertz tones and I'm always I'm always eating raw vegetables all the time and, gosh, I just can't seem to, you know, it's like, I know, but it's like you're not, well, what is it you want? <laughs> do you want, inf- what kind of information are you trying to get or are you just meditating for the hell of it? Yeah, I mean, meditating is great for you. It's great for your body. It's a healthy thing to do. However, if you want that higher knowledge, it starts with curiosity. It starts wanting to know more and going out there and getting it. And it also, in order to get that information, you cannot be one of those people that falls into the whole fear trap all the time. If someone tells me, for example, that I need to be afraid of cubes, I don't go, oh, okay, I'm going to be afraid of cubes. I go, why should I be afraid of cubes? Hmm, let me go look up cubes and find out what the cubes are all about. No, 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 no. And do I go and look, and do I find out from other YouTube users? No. I go out to credible information. I look at all the different information. I bounce information off each other. I look at history. I look at mythology. I look at everything. And that's the way that people should approach this stuff. Someone tells you you need to be afraid of Saturn or Kronos or the hexagram means this or that or the other. You need to question, you need to say, okay, Thank you for all of that information. Now I'm going to take all that information and I'm going to look it all up on the Internet and see whether you're full of crap or not. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot of people do because they just want it fed to them, see. They don't want to go out there and actually use their mind and make it work. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard actually people say, oh, don't do any research on the Internet. And I just can't fathom people actually making that, statement because there's a lot of information on the internet that is very very good it's exactly what you find in a lot of books it's just that you need to know where to access you know that information and that's not just from as you said Danny going to another YouTube channel or a blog or somewhere where someone's giving their perspective you actually want the information the real information so that then you can make your own uh, conclusion based on that it's something else. I tell you, when you start doing it, looking into the electric universe, and I mean, you you, can't, you stop lose count of the eureka moments of, oh my goodness, that's why that works. You know, that's why the wind blows. This is why people do these things. You know, yeah. it, it's incredible that it can all be narrowed down to to positive and negative, right and wrong, left and right, the duality, so to speak. Yeah, it, it can always be. Everything can be related to positive and negative. Yeah. And I always yeah. say this. I always say, if anybody ever tells you to fear anything, that is the first damn thing you better exactly. find out you can about. I'm telling you right now. If somebody tells and you, what do we fear most? Think you better find out everything you can about it because there's a reason they're telling you to fear it, and usually it's because they don't want you to know anything about it. That's why. What does a human race fear most? Death. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and why? Really, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're energy. We're not. We're infinite. We're we're not ever going to die. You know, it's only our human um, form that uh, you know disintegrates. But our energy, our spirit, 
will never die. So I don't know. I don't get that. I've never really feared death. But, uh, you know, of course, I would miss the people that I love. But um, as far as fearing death, I, I don't really have that fear. Because... Uh, that was on Fizz Orgs last year. I think an article came out about, you know, after this had found that, that almost inconclusive evidence of, of, you know, life after death, that, yeah. that the magnetic energy that is you continues to go somewhere. Well, everything, when you look at the electric universe, everything goes somewhere. Yeah. Everything's yeah. going somewhere. It is a, yeah. it's a universe of motion. Yeah, constant mo- state of motion. And, and motion is energy. You know, it's like, a, you know, the gyroscopic effects that, that, you know, they can't explain. Like you take a plastic wheel and, and put it on a table and, you know, it'll fall over if you don't do it. But if you roll it, it'll stand yeah. up all day long right. you know, or spin it. You can spin it around, and it'll spin around and stand straight up. But if it's not doing anything, it just falls over. You know, it's crazy. Like a bicycle wheel. You can take a bicycle wheel. That's crazy if you ever tried that. You, you know, you can hold on to one side of it and spin it, and you can actually let go and just hold it with one finger on one side. You know, it won't fall over until it stops spinning, you know. You, you can take a string, and it's crazy. Yeah, I just saw that. Uh, you want me to hang up and call back in? Uh, yeah, Farrah was suggesting that, yeah. Okay, well, I might do. How, how about we take a five-minute break? Yeah, that's and, a good idea. Uh, it's like just past the hour anyway, so we can take a five-minute break. Everybody can go grab a drink and popcorn and whatever. And... Sounds good. Now, I um, am going to play a tune from one of my great subscribers, uh, Catfish Daniels and his band uh, Alias. And the tune's called Them. So I'm going to play that now, and uh, I'll be back after this. Okay.
Okay, so since I'm hearing you guys, uh, seeing you guys talk on the chat room, let me talk about a couple things real quick. So you guys are asking about uh, uh, colloidal silver. You guys are asking about um, blood electrification. Um, if you guys haven't checked into uh, the work of, and I don't believe he's here anymore. Um, let's see. Let me just look it up real quick. It is oh, Dr. Robert Beck. Okay. You can also buy these things online as well. But I can tell you this. I have personally tried it, and I can tell you this, that uh, uh, if I begin to get like a fever or something like that or whatever, I have this little device, okay? And what it consists of is it's, it, uh, it, it basically has two, um, it has a positive and a negative, and I, it's, it, they're basically roach clips. And three batteries are connected to this device. You're basically shocking yourself, okay? But you're shocking yourself at such a low degree to where it doesn't really, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't like hurt you or anything like that. And so what you do is you put it on your wrist, right, where your uh, the uh, the blood is that goes through your the arteries in your wrist, and uh, and this device, and you take the positive and the negative, you put it there, you wrap these stainless steel uh, things in cotton, you dip them in salt water. And you wrap a band, you put that on your wrist, and you hold that on your wrist, okay? So what it does is when you crank that up a little bit, it sends a small electrical pulse through your blood. And what that does, uh, according to Dr. Robert Beck, and I can personally testify, uh, what it actually does is it, um, it uh, when viruses try to uh, attack your cell, it actually alters the proteins on the virus and they can't attack the cell, and then they just die. So if you're getting like a virus or something like that, you hook one of these blood electrification units up to yourself, and, a lot, and because you've got to remember, if you put it on your wrist, your blood has got to travel through your body like, uh, you know, like so many times per minute or something like that. You see? And so it's constantly circulating. So when you've got that pulse sitting there right there on top of that artery, then as that blood is passing by, it's being electrified, Okay. It's not hurting your cells. It only hurts the viruses, okay? And um, and that's the interesting thing about it. It doesn't hurt your cells. It only hurts the viruses. And it will kill 99.9% .9 of that stuff. If you use it and if you do that and then you sit like for about 15 minutes uh, and then you follow it up with uh, colloidal silver, colloidal silver, the, the best way to make colloidal silver is to uh, is to use only distilled water. Um, you don't want to use uh, uh, spring water or other kind of water. You want distilled water because it's pure water. You don't want contaminants in it, okay? And, uh, and so what you do is you take two pieces of silver and you stick them down in the water, like, say, in a glass of water, okay? Like, what you can do is you can actually take, like, a, um, a piece of cardboard, just cut out a square piece of cardboard, and, uh, and poke two holes in it. Now, and when you get your silver, what you want to do, now, and you've got to remember, you can go to the vitamin store and you can buy something called Sovereign Silver. And Sovereign Silver, I believe, is like, it's like $40 a bottle. And it's it's like, all and what they're giving you and what they're charging you for $40 for, you can actually make yourself in about um, 15 minutes with distilled water and a piece of silver, okay? The only difference is, is they can get the, they can get the, uh, uh, they can atomize it down a lot smaller than what you'll be able to, but what you'll be able to do with the silver that you get will be just fine for the purposes. And uh, so what you do is, um, is you get two pieces of silver, you hook up a 12-volt battery, okay? Use DC, all right? Um, you stick the two pieces of silver through the cardboard, set the cardboard on top of the glass of water to where the two pieces of silver are just kind of dangling inside the water, but they're not touching each other, right? And so when you apply that voltage to it, uh, to both of them, what happens is is that it, when when they're both in the water, one of them will start to uh, to atomize, and you'll start seeing the smoke coming off of, it looks like smoke coming off of one of the silver rods. And what that is, is that's actually, it's actually silver, it's, it's, and it's very, very small silver. And, but you're not going to see it in distilled water. You'll see it in regular water, but you don't want to use regular water, right? Um, with distilled water, 
you can use like a laser, I believe, can show you if there's that much in there. But you don't need that much. So if you do that for about 10 minutes or so, then you've got yourself a bunch of colloidal silver from distilled water. That's all you got to do. It's really very simple. So I think um, I made a video on this a while back, and uh, it's very kind of hard to describe since it's a very visual thing to do. Um, but uh, what I'll do is I'll probably re-upload it for folks out there because, you know, screw the FDA. Um, I'm so sick of these guys. Um, you know, nobody wants to cure you, okay? I'll, I'll tell you that right now. If you are a business person and you are in the pharmaceutical industry, um, there is no way in hell you're going to tell me that it's a business person that you want to cure anything, okay? Because I'll, I'll call you a liar because uh, curing people does not make profits. Uh, the only uh, thing that uh, they want really is to keep you as a uh, a patient, and they what they would like to really do is they'd like to keep you a patient for as po as long as they possibly can until they think you're about to die. Okay, like if I was a business person um, and I was in the pharmaceutical industry, I would say, okay, let's 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 get this person uh, a disease, or let's let's treat this person's disease with something where they have to take medication as many times as possible. So they have to buy our product as much as they possibly can. Oh, thank God, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> You've been so they, talking all the time. It's great. Uh, yeah, I've been talking the whole time. But let me finish. Let me finish. I'm talking right now. So, um, so, <laughs> you, so you basically what they want to do is they want to say, okay, um, uh, I want to get this person, um, I want to get this person a treatment where they have to buy as much of my medication as possible. They have to take it as many times per day as possible, and they have to take it until they die. And uh, based on the particular disease that they have, um, what we want to make sure of is that close to death, that there's some other um, there's some other way that we can suck more money out of them before they die. It's all about money, folks. If anybody tells you that um, every single problem that we have in this whole world, it always boils down to money. Check it out. You go research it yourself. It's always about money. Why is the United States invading all the countries? It's about money. Why is, uh, you know, why is there evil here and evil there? It's always about money. Money is always the reason. Money is the reason why uh, people are poor. You know, we shouldn't have to have money to live on this planet, but we do. You know, why is it I have to have a, a dollar in my pocket in order to be able to eat? That's ridiculous. And uh, I was talking about blood electrification, and I digressed here. And uh, the blood electrification unit, though, that I'm talking about, you can actually find them on eBay, um, and you can cure yourself, okay? About 99% of all this bull stuff, all this bullshit that's out there, you can cure yourself with these electrification units. Okay, all you got to do is just hook up three 9-volt batteries together. And um, and allow it to electrocute your blood if you feel like you're getting a virus or something like that. You don't need to take all these stupid antibiotics. Just uh, just kill the virus with electricity. Follow it up with some colloidal silver, and you're done. That's it. That's all you got to do. And if you got something like uh, HIV or AIDS or something like that out there, well, blood electrification kills that too. Do it for about 15 minutes. Um, um, I think what did I hear him say? You do 15 minutes, like uh, several, you know, several sessions of 15 minutes, and uh, and then follow it with colloidal silver and do that. And, and you know, it doesn't hurt when these things are electrify, uh, electrocuting your blood when you've got these probes next to your uh, to your skin like that. It doesn't hurt at all. It's not dangerous. It doesn't hurt at all. It just kind of feels like uh, it feels like almost like somebody's giving your wrist a massage in a way is what it feels like when you're when you're wearing one of these things. And so if you'll uh, if you'll put one of those things on your wrist, I mean, you, if you feel like you're coming down with a fever, if you feel like you're coming down with any kind of thing like that, just slap one of those things on you, and you'll be just fine in about 15 or 20 minutes. And I you know how I know that because I've tried it, and it has worked for me. The last two times where I felt like I was going to get a fever, I hooked up my electrification unit. 30 minutes later, my fever was gone. I was back to normal again. And that is my personal testimony. And uh, I, uh, you know, I can't speak for everybody. I'm just telling you that it worked for me. So um, I'm going to put a video up later, and I uh, hope that will um, help everybody. So, uh, D, yours, all yours. <laughs>